Hi guys, it's Jake here from uh, Team Sneak Attack. Basically, we've got a bit of a different video. We're going to be going through our top 10 decks for worlds. With me, I have Ben. Hello. Adam. Hi. Rob. Hi. Will. Hello. And that's it, because the other guys, they're not here. But um, yeah, we're going to be going through our top 10. We've got some honorable mentions as well. Uh, number one in the honorable mentions, really these aren't ordered, but the first deck we're going to talk about is Ultra Necrozma. So maybe a bit of a surprise to some of you as to why Ultra Necrozma, you know, a deck that's been performing fairly well in the past with Malamar, is in this, uh, is not in the top 10 even. But, well, we're going to have the guys talk about that as well. Yeah, so I've always thought Ultra Necrozma had a good Zorok matchup, which I think a lot of people worried about, and had an okay Buzzwell matchup. But I think Zorogar was probably knocked it out of the top 10, personally. Any other views? Yeah, I agree with Adam. I think Garbador. Possibly um, with Garbad Gardevoir um, coming a bit more back into popular play as well. Just hitting for weakness against it is maybe not the right play for Worlds. I just Personal. don't like how the deck is sort of inherently inconsistent. <laughs> and uh, I just don't see a reason to play it over a different deck. It doesn't seem to have its own set of great matchups that another deck doesn't have. It hasn't really got much, um, I'd say, thinning power. It's got lots of like item cards, so pretty weak against Garb already, where that's already a big deck. And also uh, late game ends uh, do hurt the deck. Personally, I've always thought the deck's okay, but and it clearly was, you know, in the sort of near tier one region. But I actually don't think it's as good against Zoroark, maybe as as Adam was saying, because Parallel actually really really hurts the deck. They can avoid the um, the four prize, well, I, not four and three prize turns, but you basically get a limited time to use Beast Rings. You're stuck trying to get metal and psychic to begin with. It's just it's got a lot of like sort of moving parts that I personally don't think are that consistent together. If you did play the deck, would you play it like uh, the conventional way with Malamar, or would you do the spicy version, which we've seen at internationals with just like four elixir, four B string? That's quite an interesting build. I've not really thought about that. Um... It's it's hard. It's they've both got their own weaknesses. Um, one's weak to uh, well, both to the same Pokemon, Garbodor. <laughs> one's weak to the ability lock. The other's weak to the um, the height of tra uh, Trasher Lodge. Yeah, I think Garb's a real shutdown for the deck, and I think considering this list as well, Garb is a <laughs> is um, a, a reason to not play this deck. To be honest. Yeah, I think losing to both parts of Garb. In Zorok, which is already a consistent deck, and also hits your main utility card, Dorwings and Cosmos Weakness, is just too much for it. The uh, the second honourable mention we have, if everyone's satisfied with our conversation on the first, is we just um, skip this one and go to the next one. <laughs> it's not a good deck. As uh, <laughs> as you probably guessed, this is the Psychic <laughs> Malamar deck that uh, actually Adam piloted to top four of NAIC, and yet. We aren't including this in our top 10, it's, but it's this is an honourable mention. Um, it's like, what's changed really from the last set? And it's just, uh, what, why is this deck that everyone played at uh, the last set of regionals and the, uh, uh, the internationals, why is that dropped out of the top 10? Um, and that, I guess, is because of the increase of um, uh, Zorak. Zorak Garbador destroys this deck. Yep. Yeah. So <laughs> you can't you can't play a deck that just loses that badly to Zorak Garbador. And Zorak I Garbador think... has won the last two major tournaments, both Valencia SPE and North American Internationals. Yeah, and that's the last two events we have to go on as well. Zorak Gar. The last time it ever done well. <laughs> well <laughs> the thing is, obviously, we're not now talking about Zorak Garb, but one thing as well is. Zorogob like is stronger as well against the new archetypes coming in, such as Rayquaza. So it just, it's just you can't beat it with this uh, psychic Malamar Mar deck. Even to the point where um, I think Adam might not even be playing the exact same sixty cards again. Oh, I I can say without a doubt, not even caring that I'm not playing Malamar. 
the only way I'd ever play Malamar is He's if lying, somehow day lying. one a deck appears <laughs> that just utterly destroys Zoro Garbon, makes Buzzwall the best deck in format, like and everybody plays Buzzwall day two, then I will happily play Malamar. But otherwise yeah. I won't touch it. Malamar has a good Buzzwall matchup. The psychic version I think is far more consistent than the ultra version. We in fact, except Ben here, uh, all played it for Sheffield because Ben wasn't there. And, um, well, Ryan, top four, me and Adam, top 32. Will, I think, um, I you're top one. Two, I, top one, two, I thought you were, were you like one win I was, short? I was one away from, I think, I went four, and I forget the other numbers, four, <laughs> four, three, four, two, three, something like that, or four, three, two. Okay. Something so, yeah, like not very far. And um, Rob, I think, had a great day and dropped. But, um,. <laughs> I got a nice early dinner, actually. Nice, nice. But, yeah, basically, obviously, I mean, every deck, there's a lot of variance. But mm -hmm. that deck can do very well in the buzz field and not so well in any other fields. Yeah, the only thing I would say for the deck is it has gained one card from the new set. Well, kind of a promo that should have been released last year. It's gained the Tapu Lele Psychic Promo, which does chain quite nicely with the Necrozma's GX attack. Which... Oh, Adam, just let the deck die. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Are you, it, Necrozma's GX attack, most of the time, you don't want to use it. You want to be using the the the, um, the Dormings Necrozma's GX attack or the Mewtwo's GX attack. Yeah. Yeah, it's the third best GX attack in the deck. Maybe fourth sometimes, because Tapu Cure can be quite good. <laughs> yeah. But, and you um, could even count Giratina's attack as bet a better attack above that GX attack. Giratina is the best attack in the deck. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's um, it's like a viable play. But personally, it's like a viable play for if you miss knockouts. It can also chain with the um, the Hooper that a lot of people play with the 20 spreads as well. Mm. I'm not convinced that's that good because I think placing 120 is just like the better thing anyway or just using the G um, I meant with the other Hooper attack uh, or just using the better GX attacks that you have available. But yeah, it, it gains one card and loses to Zoroark. So bad deck for worlds mm. but hey this is just our opinion you don't have to listen to us <laughs> yeah, yeah if, if you if... turn up and play malamar and then but you take won't it win from worlds me, but someone else will i did really well with the deck and liked the deck but i'm not playing it for worlds so if i'm not what playing it for to? worlds i lost to zoro garb there you go yeah zoro garb <laughs> was uh, your, your semi-final match and that was a loss it was indeed um well, um, yeah, it did obviously. Be a dead drawings are a gob, but <laughs> yeah, obviously we're not approaching this with any agenda. You know, this is we're not all planning on playing buzz. In fact, I'm not going. So um, <laughs> yeah, this is a uh, this is really our our I believe well informed opinions on the meta. Hmm. We have one more honourable mention. It's a little bit different. Not quite as uh, maybe powerful or is recognized as the other two but i think uh, a solid deck or a solid couple of decks and that's the beast box var beast box variants so any opinions on that guys um i think stay away from the buzz variant mm. is that even a variant still i it's it's the worst possible <laughs> people <laughs> people will not stop it being a variant they oh, will no. not give up on that Please stop. It's bad. It's hard. It's, um, it's okay. The thing is, the deck's okay. We're talking about the buzz variant here, Rob. Oh, I think we're moving on. <laughs> no, there's like three, there's three different the variants of the okay. deck. Yeah. So really, I should uh, state the variants. I guess I'm going to be including the buzz variant as one. No, that's gone. We're not talking about it. It's... Again. Okay, uh, there's, two, there's two variants. <laughs> I'm going to give it a little two. mention. The the idea obviously is you play um a Naganadel, I can't pronounce that right. And um well, a lot of fighting energy in the Buzzwells. I'm not really that it's just play Buzzrock. Yeah, yeah, just play a Sorry. different buzz yeah. deck. Yeah. Was... Or just yeah, a different buzz deck. Um it's a bad partner. Yeah. 
the other options uh there's so they're sort of like the ultra necrozma build which is is based on psychic energies i'm not too sure about that one myself but then there's mm. um there's also a dusk main necrozma build which is is based on or focused on building up some dusk main necrozmas and taking one hit knockouts but then there's also a slightly more like walling build of the stack attacker which actually i'm the most interested in this one hmm. um yeah no it beats well it should be beating a big deck buzzword but as i was we were discussing earlier um it just dies to a uh, garbage or again the, the, the abilities get shut off and uh, con- uh zo up control yeah um, so so I think we'll be talking about later. Ooh. Go. No, what I was <laughs> going to mention is I think the only two viable variants of the deck, personally, in my opinion, are they have to play, it's going to have to play Stack Attacker, no matter what you're playing, just because that card is so powerful for Ultra Beast, having the minus ten each time there's one down. But I think the main two variants are going to be that do you play the Metal Box variant, which just focuses on Solgalia Prism Star, um, heavy Stack Attackers. Baby Dustmane Necrozma. You also play Big Dustmane. Big Dustmane Necrozma. Maybe even a Celesteela GX and a Baby Celesteela, but you could play around with that. And then there's the other version, which has more of a focus on the Ganadil, probably like a free free line. Still can play all the metal stuff, but it's more focused on you're streaming the Ganadils and you're protecting them from the Buzz Wars with the stack attackers. And I think yeah. there's like two main variants that you can pick from. See, I'm not a big fan of an Ganadil heavy variant. I think it would have to be the metal one. Yeah, I don't like the Magnadel version at all. I think if you're going to play that deck, play the metal. I'm personally surprised that it didn't make top 10. Yeah, I actually, think... I quite like the metal one. Yeah, I thought cool. it would sneak in around 9th or 10th. Personally. Beast Ring. I think most yeah. of the people... Pretty good yeah. card. Sorry, go. I think most of the people that we talked to were just assuming Beast Box or Naganadel. But there are other options. You don't have to play Naganadel. You can just play straight uh metal yeah i mean there are uh, i've seen some builds obviously with a uh, stack attacker dusk main no naganada hmm. yeah that's the build i was saying yeah. i would ah, fair. yeah so i quite like that yeah so i think it's okay yeah. i think it could easily have got into top 10. it's kind of um, just like a speed metal type variant but with yeah. walling as such well yeah and the stack attacker is just a wall <laughs> yeah. so um yeah, walling capabilities. The GX attack on it is really nuts as well. Like, it's just if you get to two prizes with uh, a stack attacker with energy on it, you win. Because mm-hmm. it just always takes a. What, how much does it do? It's like, 50 plus 50 more for every prize you take. So it always does 250. Come yeah. on. Well, in the online game, it can do up to 400 damage. Okay, it always does 250. Oh. Well, ignore that. <laughs> There's a bug online at the moment. Hopefully, it's fixed soon. I've had enough talking about that bug today. (laughs) For our viewers, the bug is that if you use Beast Ball, the PTCGO, the Pokemon Training Card Game Online, counts it as you taking the prize card rather than swapping the Beast Ball for a prize card. Yeah. I think it works with Gladion too, so... My argument for why that's a bug is there are... uh, Um, hang on. There are uh, cards that say uh, take a prize, and this is essentially swapping off. And there are people that are arguing against me, and I'm getting sad. Yeah. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, this is not a video about the bug. Well, I say unfortunately. Fortunately, this is not a video about bug. This is a video about top 10 decks. So we're going to move swiftly on there. And uh, now we're going to start with number 10. So, number 10, maybe a bit of surprise. It's a deck that. Uh, I think, anyway, has fallen off a lot of people's radar, and that's solely because of a promo. Now, that deck is Greninja, Boom. and the promo is the Giratina promo, or Giratina, that, um, you know, a lot of people are playing because it fits so nicely into Malamar anyway, because you've got Psychic Attackers. It can fit into Zoroark decks because it's a trade uh, fodder if, you know, you aren't against Greninja, and mm. it's just an easy slot. But, um, yeah, the reason Greninja, I think, makes this top 10 is actually, uh, well, Malamar, as you can see, isn't in our top 10. It's fallen down quite a bit. <laughs> There's no deck that very easily plays it, and Zoroark decks are really struggling to find space to, you know, fit everything 
that is a tech for every matchup. So they are actually dropping this promo as well in favor of other cards simply because the expectation of Greninja to not be played. Hmm. So any thoughts on that? I, I think it's going to be it's it's um, it's quite the dark horse of the tournament. Um, like you said, uh, the reason why it kind of died off was because every deck and its mother was playing uh, Giratina, um, especially uh, Psychic Manoa. So um, it, it, the deck pretty much completely died off. Um, I think it did okay in one recently ish tournament, but it was just one, and people were like, "Oh, if there's only." one or two people playing it, I'm not going to play Greninja. But then if everyone's got that mindset of no one's playing it, then it could be a really good deck, especially when all the big decks are uh, Zorak with abilities and stuff. Well, yeah, the other reason, actually, is it's more that it, you know, the counter for it is, is decreasing in play, but it's also actually Greninja just is very inherently strong. It has ability lock on an attack, which is otherwise not in the game at all. So it can't be shut off unless people are playing Pokemon Ranger, which they're not. So it's got that, and it's got um, its breakability, obviously. I mean, say, with the Choice Band, you can actually uh, one-hit KO a Zoroark in a turn. And in fact, I believe you can go um, up to 230 damage, which obviously coincidentally kills a Gardevoir, with uh, two giant shurikens and a uh, Choice Banded the attack of Greninja, which I've forgotten the name of, so that's great. Um, yep, but it's, yeah, it's... it's 60 for each, which is 120, then 110 for the buffed Moonlight Slash. That's it. So yeah, it's it's obviously got a lot of power behind fairly because of its um, du water duplicates. If you're watching this, you know what the deck does, so uh, <laughs> that's all I need to say on it. Mm, I think... Uh, Sorry, Ben, you go. I was going to say, I think it's probably the best it's been in a while because it, it really died off a lot because of Giratinas and just mm -hmm. matchups across the board. Uh, Zorok's getting a big boost this set means it might be a bit stronger, but um, I think it's not ranked higher because it still has always had problems against Buzz, mm -hmm. just sort of out aggroing it early turns. Yeah, but, Buzz doesn't need to play the Tina to still beat yeah. the Ninjas. But I, I feel like it's going to be a deck which I can see one person making it into like top eight in like eighth seed, or it, or it bubbling at like ninth or tenth. I feel yeah. like that's what's going to happen with the deck. Yeah, <laughs> I think some um, hardcore Greninja enthusiasts will be playing it, even maybe day two. Mm -hmm. And uh, those hardcore Greninja enthusiasts may find themselves at ninth and tenth place. Seems to be the way it happened with Volcanion <laughs> a couple years ago. <laughs> so <laughs> we uh, we shall see. I have two very strong reasons not to play the deck. Yeah. Ooh. Well, three. In, so you have Buzz, mm -hmm. Galissapod, and your opponent will hate you forever. <laughs> <laughs> I guess there's also Garbodor. Garbodor is a bit of a pain for, for Greninja. Yeah. Well, I think on top of that, also Rayquaza causes a lot of problems because it once Rayquaza gets all its energy on board, it, it just sets up to one-hit KO Greninja every single turn. Well... Yeah. Rayquaza with Fury Belts for sure, because um, you can hit a uh, the Greninja, not the Break, for four energy with the belt and knock it out. And they'd have to find their blower to remove to take a one hit knockout at the same time as using uh, Shadow Stitching, which is obviously the attack they want to be using. Yeah, I agree with Adam personally. Like it feels the same sort of thing as Buzzwell, where you just sort of get out aggroed mm -hmm. while maintaining a board. Yeah, so uh, Boswell as well can do some snipes and actually remove multiple Pokemon in, in a turn as well. Yeah. Uh, also, some Rayquazas are playing Garbodor, which yeah. is another <laughs> problem for yeah. Greninja. <laughs> Even worse. So it it obviously comes with its problems. Yeah, it's Greninja. It always has problems. I, yeah. I'm amazed no one's talked about just it being Greninja. <laughs> <laughs> You can't I, games where you just start a lone throw key. You've got a Brooklet Hill, so you can get another throw key, and that's it. Yeah. That's your whole hand. Is, is that how you want your world experience to go? <laughs> just a throw key pass. I have tried Greninja at one tournament, because every time I've wanted to otherwise, I test it, and then I get so demoralized by uh, losing a prize every turn. <laughs> by, oh, a throw key dead. Oh, 
a frog it is dead. Oh, a Greninja's dead. Oh, a Greninja breaks dead. Okay, at least I drew them all. Mm. <laughs> was, close was, game, uh, close game. <laughs> <laughs> it was the only time I played Greninja at a tournament was a League Challenge a couple of seasons ago. And round one, I went up against Adam. And I dead drew. Uh, and he, I managed to get a Froakie turn one. And I think I had to set a star you on on the bench as well um so uh this is how the game went my turn i do my set star you pass adam uh managed to get a ko with his evelto with i think like a a max elixir and an attachment kills the ah, yes. uh, ko's the ko's my froki i promote star you i managed to draw and out to another Froki, put that on the bench. Lysander, kill Froki, dead. Yeah, yeah. Rip. That's how that match went. So... Yeah. <laughs> Greninja has a habit of having things die repeatedly. I would recommend. Um, I, I think it's a good play if you're a real Greninja enthusiast. Uh, enthusiast. Um, oh, yeah, it's your last then, chance to play it before. If, it if you're not yeah. looking to win worlds, but get in the top sixteen, then it's the deck for you. I think if if you like the deck and you like how it runs and you know it inside out, there's not a better deck you could play for yourself. So you can just play just play what you feel comfortable with. Well, I disagree with that. I think there's a lot of better decks you can play. <laughs> uh, and those decks are coming up. up right, right, yeah, there's not there. ten on the list for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> so let's move up to number nine. So number nine's interesting one. So we're kind of grouping decks, not not exactly here, but here we're going to list this as dark variants. Basically, we're thinking of things like Quad Hooper. That's the attacking version. There is actually Walls Hooper as well, um, which I personally wouldn't really put in this list at all. There is also like spread variants with the Veltal, which um, we've seen on uh, we've seen in NAIC. I believe one made top eight with um the baleful knight attack mm. basically and yeah. yeah just just general things like that they've got a um a bit of a boost now with shrine of punishment yeah yep but so, I, yeah i think even with the shrine of punishment they still or they've always historically had problems with zorok decks just because zorok can always heal so no matter how much like you have to have spread damage on the board for Bell for Knight to activate, which I guess Shrine of Punishment does, but they always heal more and they heal more and they heal more, and especially with Zora Control coming out, which can just heal everything every turn while removing all your energy. It just seems like they're not doing enough against Zorok to really merit the deck being higher than ninth place at the moment. See, I don't think I think that can happen, but I think the Zoro player kind of has to get actually quite lucky for that all to happen. <laughs> And of, of course, you do have the Aveltal to put the NG back on. But yeah, pretty much it, it does struggle with Zoroark variants quite a lot. Yeah, I, I don't think it can deal with Zoro Control at, at the end, assuming the Zoro Control knows how to play against the deck. Yeah, I don't see... Basically, I don't see it taking six prizes against yeah. Zoro Control. Four, maybe. Mm. Maybe five. <laughs> but trying to take that finish is uh, going to be really hard for it. But, I mean, it should have a decent Zoro Guard matchup, right? Uh, I, I've tested it. Much on abilities. Yeah, I think it's fairly good in that matchup. Um, it's quite good against Boswell variants as well. Yeah. And it's um, it's just it's just generally quite um, yeah. You know, if you depending on how you built the deck, quite quite straightforward in terms of. Well, maybe straightforward's the wrong word, but <laughs> basically your opponent has to take six individual prizes. So you get a lot of time to be able to try and set up and, you know, spread your damage and try and take knockouts. I mean, even if your opponent's taken three prizes, you still have a chance to come back. Yeah, it also utilizes uh, or can utilize the um, going behind on prizes cards quite well. Yeah. As in counter energy, counter capture. But. Uh, and it's of course Ho Hooper as a, yeah. a great um, a great wall in some scenarios. So and arguably yeah. wins you the Rayquaza matchup single handedly if they're not playing Garbodor yeah. or um, Aranguru. Yeah, Aranguru is bad for Hooper. Yeah, well, I mean honestly, even if they play Aranguru, I still think he win the matchup. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think um, 
if you can build a Hooper up in one turn, which the deck can with Elixirs, hmm. you can, you know, wall entire decks, but not enough really to, to warrant anything higher than a, a ninth place on this list. Do we all agree that Yveltal was probably the best way to deal with it? Oh, well, to play the deck, I mean. I think so. It, it utilizes attack in Hooper and spread, so it's kind of similar. Yeah, so I quite good. like it. You also have options to say devolve Espioni X. Obviously, that kind of ruins your your them wanting to take six prizes game. Yeah. But it's uh, yeah, it's got a lot of different options. I I quite like it myself. And there's always shining Jirachi. No, there's never shining Jirachi. <laughs> there's never shining Jirachi. <laughs> I tried to make but, that work when it came out in Drampa Garb, and it just wasn't worth it. But there is Jirachi Prism Star in every deck, so. <laughs> No. Um, so uh, I, I think that's enough on these variants. I don't know if yeah. anyone has anything more to say. The Volta Breaks one of my favorite cards. Like ever. yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> and I like it because the attack reminds me of uh, Mega Gallade's attack. It's just better than Mega Gallade ever was. Uh, oh, the <laughs> oh, hit damage and spread thing. Yeah, the Volta's better. Yeah. Yes, guys. It's actually um, it's got. The similar attack to Volcanion Prism Star, but you can play more than one of it, so wow. you Mind know blown. it's good. Mind blown. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> as as long as everyone thinks uh, thinks we've covered that enough, let's get on to um, number eight. So number eight, we're actually going to list again. We sort of have to put variants behind a lot of things because really, it's it, God of War, but God of War variants really hard to say what exactly you play with it there's zoro guardi there's a version with octillery there's a version with sylvie on but they're all they're all kind of on the same on the same page so i per so in terms of the different variants before we start discussing how it is in the meta i think personally my favorite variant is just the straight guard of war with Aranguru. guru nothing else maybe maybe a volpix as well just because the learning volpix is quite nice in that deck and that's it. You're just playing a Guard of War and a Galade deck, and that's it. Nothing else. So just pure Guardy Galade. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I think it's just um, straight, uh, just very consistent, to be honest. Um, hmm. You only need one energy to attack really uh, straight away. You're able to fit in like, the max potions. The uh, Buzzwell cutting down on Buzzwells, but I believe they are going to put them back up again. Um, not many things can one shot a Gardevoir, uh, and it's very, it's generally very good against uh, Zoroark. Yeah, so the main strength of the deck really is is actually against the with Zoroark increasing in play, Gardevoir does also do better. It's got Gallade, which can take one hit knockouts. It's quite hard to <laughs> to actually take down with a um a Zoroark. It has healing capabilities. It's just got a lot of nice options. But it can still lose. <laughs> no. Hence, it's down still at eighth place. I think um, personally, I quite like. Uh, really, I like Gallade Octillery. I've been always on the Make Gallade Octillery Great Again train from 2015. <laughs> but um, you can uh, obviously, you know, build that differently now because you've got Gardevoir as well. I quite liked the um, Zorok Gardevoir decks we saw a bit earlier in. Um, the uh, the season with uh, the international championships and I believe uh, Tord actually won with it. Then though, Buzzwell was bigger, so it's surprising it won because Buzzwell GX really it it is not a fan of Buzzwell GX. Yeah, oh, no. And neither one of the cards that were the main players in Tord's deck liked Buzzwell, no. so <laughs> he managed to win. So. <laughs> So, yeah. well, so be it. The decks clearly, um, or the deck variants clearly have a lot of strength, a lot of power, but also a lot of weaknesses, hence they're down at number eight. Well, I I think it's quite nice that it's gained, mis is it Mysterious Treasure? Yes. Quite recently, which you can get to get routes out and Curlia, which I think yeah. the deck really didn't have before. It relied a bit too much on, like... Still the Lowland Volpix, or yeah, or draw, just hoping to draw into it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. The very first versions did incorporate Lowland Volpix. Yeah, yeah. So um, 
I like that it's got yes. rid of that. And also, personally, I'd say the top deck is Zoro Luck, and that deck really doesn't like Gardevoir because yeah, of the Twilight really GX. Struggles. So that's one of the best reasons to play it, I'd say. Yeah. I think it's solid against a lot of the Zoro variants. I think losing probably to Zoro Rock, but the other the other thing as well, actually, I uh, just want to comment on the Psychic uh, psychic Routes and Curlia. It's not a huge thing, but being able to actually hit Buzzwalls for weakness can really matter. A, uh, a Routes with a Choice Band <laughs> can do 100 damage to a Buzzwall GX, and <laughs> When your routes, your little routes, is hitting a big puzzle, I don't think that's anything to, you know, I think that's something to take into consideration. I think a side note is also that if you're playing Mysterious Treasure, it just makes it easier to play uh, Evolutions new to because you can just search out really easy with the treasure. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and of course oh, yeah. that old uh, Tapu Lele, I think, yeah. he's good. Right, so I think I think that's enough on uh, the Gardevoir variants. We still got a lot to cover mm -hmm. so uh in seventh place we have a uh, zoro Burnett, which is a new deck with um the celestial storm coming out the Burnett gx i think is a really really interesting card mm -hmm. zoro Burnett's found itself in top 10 just because it actually has some really cool well basically it can be built like a zoro control deck with some really cool extra plays but also the Burnett really really um hurts boswell <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> we've been testing. I did not just. I'm sorry. You get right. As I said, we've been testing some Buzzwall decks recently, and because if you've been watching the invitation, some of us have been playing Zora Burnett, the Buzzwall decks just don't really stand a chance. It's pretty sad. Um, I think what's really cool about Burnett is you don't have to, uh, because obviously there's so much Zoro out at the moment. You should obviously don't just play one just like that. You could just have a shop it sitting there whenever. And it can KO a Lele, which previously uh, Zoark couldn't do without Kakui. Or some more sort of difficult or... things to do, such as uh, the, GX the Galissapod. Yeah, GX attack. Well, it can do it for one energy, which I think is yeah. the main strength, mm. which yeah. is nuts. It can do it for one energy as long as, say, it's a rainbow or there's 10 damage already in play. What, yeah. one damage counter? <laughs> It's just got that good synergy with you're discarding all your um, Bridget's in the mid game, which you mm. don't need to use anymore. And it's, it's just really easy to get all those supporters into the discard because it's a lot of ability. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Sorry, go. I was going to say, I think it has like really strong matchups sort of across the board, aside from the Zorok variants. And then against the Zorok variants, uh... Zoro Rock is the only one which really stands out, and then also, I guess, Zoro Luck, because they can parallel away their lallies. Yeah, they have plays against the deck, basically. Yeah. But I think, um, yeah, I think one of the main things um, about Burnett, I can't remember what I was going to say now. Excellent. So, someone else say something. Well, while you're thinking about that, <laughs> I'll give an advertisement to the Sneak Attack Invitational. Where you can watch Ryan Morehouse. I think he's uh, doing extremely well with the deck in the Invitational. Yeah. And if you want to see like how the deck can run, that's probably the best method. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. yeah watch, watch Ryan, not Adam. Yeah. Yeah. Adam, not so good. Ryan. Ryan. Oh, Ryan, pretty good. Oh, until you see that one out. Day, but spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> like I also it. do like that. Um, just. The Burnett ability itself means hitting 130s, for example, with Zoroark, or even, um, you know, over two turns, say, moving damage and hitting 150 isn't the end of the world. Like, it's a thing you can genuinely do. Hmm. I think it's got a lot of um, a lot of strength to it. It's, it's also, honestly, I think people like playing with new cards, so we're going to see, we're going to see new things appear within this top 10 list, partly because the cards are new. I also think Burnett's just really cool. <laughs> it just, it, it has, it's got resistance to fighting, doesn't it? Yeah, so does so, the shop it. Yeah. So uh, you can't actually one-hit KO uh, a shop it at all in Buzz Rock or Buzz Dying. Uh, they can with a beast energy, but they need um, to, to be exactly a beast and a Deancey. Beast. Hmm. 
it's a 60. It's got 70 HP now? Or 60? 60. 60. Oh. Yeah, a little bit of a shame it doesn't have 70. But, um, I, yeah, I think I think um, it's also a little bit of a shame because sometimes you'll actually want to attach the rainbow, but I guess you try and avoid that. Uh, one other small thing, actually, is because the deck does play rainbow energy, your opponent does have to fear possible techs. And so, so our GX attack. Yeah, though I haven't ever seen that come into play with the list. But, um, <laughs> but hey, yeah. they have to fear it still, nevertheless. I think one thing as well, with rainbows, I wouldn't necessarily tech anything in, but it means that, say, you could play the um, uh, the fairy Tapu Lele, say, for um, Rayquaza. You could be playing Baby Boswell for Zoroark, obviously. Mm you're able to move the damage that happens with the rainbow as well if you have Bennett in place. So Azorok can't necessarily immediately respond to KO the Boswell. But really, it's just the threat of the text that I think is is the strength. Mm. So anything more on that deck from anyone? I think you uh, found it quite well, Bennett's actually. cool. Bennett is cool. Bennett's yeah. such a cool Pokemon. Yeah. Just like the actual Pokemon's amazing. Even the artwork on the GX looks so nice. Oh, I guess one thing actually is it's this is kind of a spiritual reprint of the old Bennett GX, isn't it? Uh, EX, sorry. Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> but actually one thing to add is the the Bennett GX's attack is is pretty sweet as well. It's just the same as Decidueye's. Just get three yeah. cards back to hand. It has yeah. Tomb Hunt and you can play that with like Acerolas. Yeah. So you can be a kind of your own Storly deck against things that aren't called Zorok. Yeah, because <laughs> it does get one hit by Zorok. Yeah, Sad days. Or oh, Hooper. Right. So we're still only on number seven, so I guess it's time to move on. At number six, we have uh, Rayquaza. So we're going to cover both Rayquaza and Rayquaza with Garbodor. I think actually Rayquaza, there's sort of a lot of internal variants within it. Even the difference of choice band to Fury Belt, I think, can be quite big. So... Mm. Any opinions on that, guys? Um, I think Choice Band is better overall. Uh, I've done a lot of testing with Rayquaza myself. Um, I think you definitely want to be using Choice Band. However, if there is Greninja, as we previously spoke about, if there's a lot of Greninja, then uh, Fury Belt would be better. And it's also good against uh, Buzz variants because... Uh, aside from uh, Lycan Rock, its HP is at 190. So, uh, what is it, 6 energy plus Fury Belt does KO it, and you've got that extra HP to not get KO'd straight away from a Buzz GX or... And you know, the Baby, baby Buzz. buzz. It, you only need 4 plus the Belt. But because there's so much Zorak at the moment, obviously uh, 210 HP... Um, you'd only need uh, six energy plus a choice band rather than seven each turn. Yeah, some quite important numbers. One thing I'll say as well is um, don't play Wishful Baton. <laughs> no, Wishful Baton is. <laughs> I think it's okay, but. Uh, it's okay if there was no field blower. Okay, when I, I say it was okay if there's no field blower, I mean, it'll be incredible without field blower, but when most decks are playing two to three field blower, it's. No. <laughs> so any other any other real views on the uh sort of we're kind of focused a bit in on the the tool separation there i think really we should talk about what the deck actually does and why why it's on this list at all so the deck's always a scary one because it has that one hit ko turn one and turn two potential it can just get what five energy on board turn one then next turn it can have like seven or eight energy on board one hit carrying almost everything and it just it can put on a lot of pressure really really quickly because it goes through its deck so quickly with acro bikes, Rayquaza, Sycamores, everything else that it basically says if you haven't set up properly, I'm going to win this game. Yeah, However, it, because it, you go through your deck so quickly, you can also get rid of all the resources you need late game so you don't get decked out or run out of super rods, pal pads, guzmas, all this other stuff. Yeah, it has some inherent weaknesses in its own ability which you do want to use. And that simply, well, it's it's just the fact that you're discarding three cards, which might not be good for you to discard. It also just gets destroyed by Garbodor. Yeah, trash, trash on, on, 
before. <laughs> I mean, it just doesn't stand a chance. It's not even like you, you literally have to hope your opponent opens uh, Trubbish and nothing else. <laughs> to be honest, I think it I think it can win solely because prize race. One of these one of the things about these really sort of hyper aggressive decks is yeah, they, they really do suffer the sort of late game to things that punish them in the late game by parallel garb end sort of things. But if you um you know, if you can just about put together the final KO then obviously you take that game. And I think very often you will be able to, but obviously one of the main things that it struggles with is, you know, even against, say, um, Zoro Garb, if you're taking, if you've taken like four or five prizes, you might never take that last one solely because they blocked you out of it. Yeah. I think also, um, what was I going to say? Uh, Baby Buzz really hurts the deck. You're going to be only taking one prizes. Uh, versus them taking two at a time eventually. Mm -hmm. I yeah, I would agree that it doesn't like to go up against single prize decks. Yeah, it wants to be swinging. One thing as well is actually the Garb Toxin Garbador shuts off the Rayquaza's ability, which obviously, you know, the Rayquaza's ability <laughs> mid to late game just reads add thirty damage. So um, <laughs> obviously not, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I'm not, stand, right? yeah, <laughs> I'm not entirely convinced by this Garbador variant, which we actually haven't really touched on. But it, um, it might no. be, um, it might be strong. So any views on that? I, I, it did well in a recent event, but I don't, I don't know. I haven't really looked into it a lot myself, so it's like I shouldn't really be talking like negatively about it. It just seems like why are you playing a Fine, it plays Mysterious Treasure, I get that. But why are you playing a random discard deck with uh, Stage 1s and other basic Pokemon? Hmm. It, it just seems you can lose your garbs and resources very quickly. I understand you played like, maybe a couple of Super World slash Stretchers to get them back. Well, I think but... it's mainly so you can go hyper-aggressive and then sort of lock your opponent out of the game before they lock you out of the game. Yeah. So it you can kind of even like as long as you get that trubbish down and you don't discard all of your garbs because you have mysterious treasure, you can get that garb out, say, turn two after mustering, you know, enough of a enough energy together to take a one hit knockout. And if your opponent doesn't have the right cards right then, you literally you know, you've aggroed them and locked them. It's enough to win. But I think my main issue with that variant has always been that parallel is in the format. So your your ideal board is what usually three Rayquazas and sometimes a Latias or even just a fourth Rayquaza. If they parallel you, you can't have that because the, the guard has to take up a space. It just, it just parallel seems to hurt quite a lot when you've got things that aren't Rayquaza. Hmm. That's and, and a lot of the time you do need to put down a Lele. Yeah, or even multiple. Now I think the deck is quite strong, hence the list Andy even at number six, but comes with a lot of uh, inherent problems as well. Yeah. Any more views on this before we move on? Um, I've seen... Sorry. No, it's okay, go on. I've seen some people talking about playing it with Vika Vault. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's just... Why? <laughs> I mean... Right. Oh, uh, first Rayquaza, okay. Oh, I discarded three... Um, rare candies. Okay. No, no, no. Oh, I guess... oh, no, no, no. It's, it's, all, it's all about okay. the Venusaur. <laughs> oh, the Venusaur double is grass all energy. About, oh. It's all about electric <laughs> Yeah, there, there are a lot of different variants because of its energy type that you could play this with. Personally, I actually understand the Vika Volt one a little bit because yeah. the well, idea of Bulu is taking, is doing 210, more or less. Yeah, but, but Bulu three energy and then lose the three energy so you can sort of see what the the ray the ray quasi is mm. doing there is taking mm. longer you need more energy but then not losing the energy you also yeah. don't have to discard a ray quasi's ability yeah you don't it's it's you do, a yeah, you, you may have to yeah but so it's it's got mm. some potential i'd like to i'd like to see it in action oh i, I, would, I, I wouldn't play it a lot of it in day one really 
<laughs> I, I feel like we're going to have... because Day I think he is... means Ray in general. Yeah, we were talking about Ray Vicovolt. Oh yeah, no, not very people. Yeah. Oh right. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, yeah, no. I, th I think you're gonna struggle to make a sixty card deck from it anyway. So yeah. yeah, I think it's just it's too clunky, really. Like most of the time with with Bulu, when I've when I've personally tested Bulu, it's consistency. And I know there are some people who swear that Bulu is a really consistent deck, but from my personal experience, it's not. It's it's high variance. Which, as we've seen from tournaments, high variance doesn't seem to be the way to go. Consistency is what wins tournaments most of the time. Yeah, the I mean, it depends. If if you're if you like Bulu and you wanna, no, not Bulu, sorry, uh, Vika Volt, and you wanna <laughs> give it, a, you know, a world hurrah, not last hurrah, cause it's still in format, but <laughs> then sure. But no, I think I think if you're going for Rayquaza, you pick the <laughs> one of the good variants. Oh, do any of you like the Marsh Shadow? From Shining Legends with it. Mm, I. What does that do? I, I think it's the same problem with bench space, personally. It's basically a judge, as you put it on the bench. As in, mm. like, the card judge. Uh, the I mysterious like pressure for judge is yeah, okay. I don't think it draws Ray enough cards. I, I think it does. I like, think it's it. Because you want a it. red card your opponent, essentially. Okay. Yeah. Card, but you can get it out of Mysterious Treasure. I think it draw you some as well, but bench space in that deck is horrible, so I wouldn't play it. No. I think, considering you already play Mysterious Treasure, if you were going for a sort of red card variant, you'd play it. But red if not, probably don't. There you go. I think, I think the risk is also just uh, starting with it as well. You pay a low basic count as well. It only has one retreat cost. Yeah, well. it's a much mm. better starter than Rayquaza. That is true, but then it was stuck with the bench. Anyone there? So you can get another couple of cards out. So it was a lele if you open it, though. I'd rather have a lele on the bench because you play elixirs and you can technically attack with it. Yeah. Oh, well, Marshadow might have a spicy attack. I would not have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I need a psychic energy. <laughs> yeah. I do believe it's psychic colorless. 30 damage, don't apply resistance. Oh, that's spice. Oh, no. Go through Zorok. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, maybe not. Wait, Let's it's not move on to the next deck. Or, or yeah. I think that's yeah. a good point to move on. Okay, next one. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, Rayquaza. Any um, any final thoughts, guys? I think that's it. <laughs> nope. That's uh, so. There was a final thought. It was no final thoughts. Next on our list, uh, number five, is Zoro Pod. So. To the uh, to the uneducated, that's Zorark with Galissapod as its sort of uh, backup attacker. Does anyone want to want to say a few words about that little deck? I think it's a solid deck. Um, only issue is uh, Zoro Control. Um... Wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, really that's know. that's it really. Um, it's it's got good matchups, I guess, all around the board. Buzz uh, Buzzrock, Buzzgarb. Uh, you got um, the uh, Galissapod's one shot in Garbodors, which is pretty nice. And um, no, I, I think I think it's a good deck. I, I think if you're going into day one for Worlds, it's not a bad choice. Yeah, but it's a very safe pick in my mind. But it still think, plays um, Hooper. It still plays Hooper, right? Excuse me. Hooper. Sorry. I mean, oh my god. I mean, I was going to say it's weak against uh, Hooper, but it still plays a Ranguru, right? I think if it didn't before, people are definitely going to play a Ranguru in it now. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I, I think it just loses to Zoro Lock. I wouldn't yeah. play it, yeah. or even call it a safe play, personally, if it loses to Yeah, day okay. one, it might it's... be safe, but not for day two. Really, I guess what I mean is it's been people's safe deck. Hmm. So it's the deck that you're not sure what to play. I'll uh, just pick Zoro Pod and hope, you know. It's worked in the past, it will work yeah. now. Sort of I think it has I also do agree that its matchup against Zorolok, or really I guess I should say a good Zorolok, is is appalling to the point where like it might be a bad play if you're ex well, it is a bad play if you're expecting a lot of Zorolok. I think I'm not sure about can, day one. I think if you can pull off the uh, sort of Adam level of dodging matchups, then it might be a good pick. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's a technical term, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, if you can avoid. Um, Add some dodging. <laughs> it's uh, ALDM, Adam level of dodging matchups. ALDM. I'm sure that's going to catch on. And I'm sure yeah. we'll trademark it. <laughs> no, but. Yeah, uh, so... Sorry. About to say another. If you can... Go on. Uh, I was about to say, sorry, because I thought it was quite important. Another thing about Zoropod um, that I found is it can't deal with Rayquaza, where Zoro Rock has Lycan Rock, which can take a GX attack, and then the Lycan Rock itself can then one-hit KO Rayquazas, and Zoro Garb, I mean, Garb destroys Rayquaza. But... I don't know if I agree with that. Cutting I... cross GX? I, I think it's okay against Rayquaza for a yeah. Zoro Rock deck. You um, can... but... yeah, sorry, You're continue. crossing cut GX for a KO, you can utilize Counter Capture quite well. And you also have you can play Sylveon EX in it quite easily. I guess yeah. you can play Sylveon, yes. I actually think, to be honest, if you play Sylveon EX, it's it's a positive matchup. Yeah. Yeah, Personally. I agree with that. If you don't, then I would say it's negative, but being able to use crossing cut and also like it it also I mean it isn't an aggressive deck itself, but doing one twenty on turn two isn't nothing. Yeah. So, you know, you you can definitely do that, and and you have a lot of draw power. You'll be able to do that. I think you play it so as as good a matchup as you can against like every other deck. So it's inherently good against sorry Garb usually. Yeah. Uh, Good against it can be good against Rayquaza, and then you know that you go with that sort of mentality, and I guess just sort of hope you don't you don't play Zoro Luck or against Zoro Luck player because you can still beat a bad one. I think because it, yeah, because at the end of the day, it's still a Zoro deck. It isn't so unlike Zoro Burnett, which I believe should be built more like a Zoro Control, but with Burnett. This is li- just Zoroark Galissapod. It's not Zoro Control, really, by any means. It's it's got a, an alternative attacker that's a main feature. Hmm. Though I guess it's kind of all of the alternative attackers of Zoroark are main features. But it doesn't aim to kind of uh, remove energy and and win with uh, any really weird ways of winning. It just it likes to heal and it likes to deal damage. Yeah, just sort of consistency with like damage output. Yeah, I would say uh, a spice. Oh, we didn't do the uh, Omni Poke um, tech thing that they had in the corner. Like, oh, possible tech for this deck. So. <laughs> So we will for this one. Decks for Zoro Rock decks, I don't think that. Yeah. They can really pinpoint one. Yeah, but we're gonna do that. We're gonna do it for this one, guys, because <laughs> I've got the spiciest tech ever. Which actually, I think I saw someone play once, anyway, and that's that weird Clover card. Missing Clover. Sorry. Play a Rangaroo, four of those babies, and you've got yourself some free prizes, friend. No. Um. Uh, moving on to deck. <laughs> yeah, no, don't do that at Worlds. <laughs> is is my my opinion. I think um I think Zoropod, yeah, as as Ben said, you build it to be as good as it can be against well, let's say every other matchup, which um I I think that more or less is like what putting in one Oranguru and from um Ultra Prism I think and one um. Uh, Sylvia forgotten the Sylvia on the X. Yep, thanks. And uh, yeah, then actually, you're probably good to go, except for the uh, pretty bad, you know, um, Zoro control matchup. But yeah, uh, Adam Dodge, all of those boys, and you're in. As a side <laughs> note, um, I don't know if you've seen Jimmy's list when he top four internationals. I think he, I have. He played a Rainbow Energy. Do you think he'd bother with that, or just go all grass? So he played the Rainbow Energy, I assume, because he's playing Mew EX. Yeah. And um, a mix of that copying attacks, and then like uh, Tapu Lele's GX. Yeah. I I would say no. Uh, so you want to play basic it because of there's just so many, so it's, a lot of decks are playing in Hard Summer at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that. Yeah. Personally, I quite like the rainbow, but it's it's hard because you also play Mallow, maybe even two. It you can get it, but I, I'm not sure how much uh, how much it it matters. 
because it can just be enhanced hammered away. Yeah, if your tournament attachment is a, a rainbow energy on a wind pod, and you're like, oh, enhanced hammer. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you are not a happy bunny. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it finds its it finds itself um, fifth place on the list. Uh, I'd I'd still I'd still say in many ways it's it's safe, but has a bad has a a matchup that is so bad, you know, you might want to consider not playing it. <laughs> but it is only the one matchup. Any more thoughts on the uh, Zoro pod? Nope. None. All no. right. Yep. So we're on to oh one thing actually I really want to say about it is it's um it's a grass attacking <laughs> deck which still can play three parallel shot off like well decrease its own damage and still not really care so uh, there must be something to it if you can do all that but yeah that was just one final thought <laughs> next uh, <laughs> next we're on to Zoro Rock which uh, is our fourth place deck. Personally, um, this is uh, it's one of my... Well, I played this at one tournament. It's one of my more favorite variants to play because of um, you know, Lycan Rock's ability as well as you actually don't have to go all in on the Zeru as you, can, you, you put your first energy generally on a Rock Rough. And uh, yeah, just uh, it's got quite a lot of nice sort of 50-50-ish matchups. You can play the Buzzworld Tech. Any uh, thoughts on all that, guys? I think it's a good deck. I think it's definitely a deck that can do incredibly well at Worlds. It's got it's... relatively good matchups because I'd say you'd also play a, a baby Buzzwop now in it. To baby uh, Buzzwop. Uh, Buzz. <laughs> <laughs> baby Buzzwop. Um, just play a baby version of the deck and <laughs> just a baby yeah. version of the deck. <laughs> you you kind of are if you're playing <laughs> like and rock. And the Reggie Rock. Um, yeah. wait. No. Um, sorry, but um, no, it's a, it's a good deck. It's a, it's a good deck. The GX attack is very strong. And if you're playing it with basics as well now, because of so many enhanced hammer, um, you'll be able to hopefully get a full pattern like what just uh, KOing uh, Zoroark. Yeah, what I like really is that um, it, it has a lot of options that you can put in the deck. It's got anything from Mew, EX, Mewtwo, Latios, uh, Baby Boswell. You can play Deancey, Prism Star even. But um, one of the main th <laughs> but even with all those techs, still one of the main things that a lot of decks find that they struggle with most out of it is Lycan Rock. Zoro Garb, for example, you know, one the way you have to go, I think, really, is is going quite heavy with Lycan Rock and maybe cleaning up those garbs with a uh, Zoroark. But the Lycan Rock is your is your main utility in a lot of these matchups. Yeah. Lycan Rock's such a strong card against so many decks and just hitting for fi uh, fighting weakness against yeah. Zoroark. It's always going to have I, a strong presence. I think once again, though, its main issue is because it does play uh, DC as well and not the highest count of energy. And we're going to be saying this a lot now, I guess. Uh, Zoro Control just destroys it. Uh, Zoro Lock. I think so. It destroys it. I think it's got an, a negative matchup against it, but can win if Zoro if misses. No, uh, if Zoro hits tails, really. Maybe his tail on hammers. And... Yeah, that's what I'd say. Because if if you now build Zoro Rock to fit in more basic energies, and you sort of go down the Lycan Rock route, they don't manage to get a one, uh, you know, a KO on a Rock Ruff on the bench. You, you've actually got a, a reasonable chance, I think, maybe positive. It's probably the best. Well, it is the best uh, Zoro variant to beat Zoro Control. Yeah, I one, think. Sorry, I was Go about on. to say one interesting play they can do is because they do play multi switch, they can actually because at some point the Lycan Rock might get dragged active and they just team flare grunt it to death. You can actually attach the basic fight into any of your bench Pokemon you choose, and they have to then hit crushing hammer heads. Otherwise, you just multi switch it active, attach another energy, yeah. and you can start attacking again. That's one true. thing you have to be careful of is obviously they could counter capture plus team flare grunt. 
but I think maybe we should not talk so much about specifics or really no. like any kind of in-depth analysis of plays in this. I think um, it's kind of all... It, it comes down to so many sort of, uh, you know, what-ifs, should we say. I think the whole format does. Hmm. But um, <laughs> but yeah, Z uh, Zorro Rock, one, one thing I actually quite like about it as well is it's um, the Lycan Rock itself. You, this this deck tend to be slightly negative, I'd say, to Buzz Rock, or at least in the past, I'd say more so. But you actually can can hit 130, you know, turn two even with your Lycan Rock, clearing up the baby Buzzwells and actually taking that match solely because of how ridiculous Lycan Rock is. You can also drag up their Lycan Rock <laughs> in the same way, but mm. yeah, it's still just negative to Buzz. It yeah, I think been, and the problem the is I'm, wor I'm worried about playing it as if you're worried about Buzz. Yeah, I'd say the main problem really is they can also do the same with Lycan Rock. Yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. A lot of them want to only play the single prize game of just putting down only well, only single prizes, but. I think um, it, I think if in that matchup you you go for Lycan Rock quite quickly, but and yeah, pretty much um, yeah, it's, it's Zoro Rock's strong deck. It's got its place on this list, very high up, but it does uh, it does suffer a little bit to say uh, Boswell. Next on our list, number three. Well, actually, I should say any more uh, any more things to say, guys, on uh, Zoro Rock. It rocks. And Zoro. Excellent. Excellent. I guess anything to say about Zoro Rock is what do you think about the split of Rockruff? Do you think you should play some of the corner one or play all the 70 HP one? I think all 70 HP. But then it's like you, you, you'd like to think no one's stupid enough, I guess, to fall for the, um, the corner. But I guess it does happen. I'm personally not sure. I, I've even. In certain in a certain format, so bear with me here. <laughs> I'd consider the fifty HP DC for thirty one. Okay, and moving on. Entering the top three. So the reason for that, just quickly. Oh, oh no, is... no, 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 no! Entering the top three. <laughs> Sorry. Is that you can kill Zeruas and it might give you uh, a slightly stronger um. Zoro uh, control matchup, but no, re really, I'd say if if you're thinking of corner, play one. Otherwise, seventy HP, all fine. Yep. Okay. okay. So <laughs> now that train wreck's done, let's uh, <laughs> let's move into the top three. And now I think we're we're all reasonably agreed. This this top three really, really is the top three. Yeah. Like, um, there's yeah. there's not really any wiggle room. These are the tier one. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> <laughs> These are the tier one top three decks, and I really, um, I really believe it. Now, third place we're giving to uh, Zoro Garb. So, uh, anyone want to talk a little bit about that deck? Adam doesn't get a chance to talk about Zoro Garb, considering the list that he gave me. That's all I have to say about that. Adam lost to it, so was that yeah, a bad list? I'm sure. I'm sure Adam doesn't want to bring up those harsh <laughs> memories. <laughs> I don't know. I had fun uh, flipping hypnosis a few times. <laughs> oh, sorry. Watching so, Stefan with Pinosis. I think yeah. I think we should point out that um, I think for a lot of us, this top three, especially second and third, can interchange quite easily. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think what I would say is that they're definitely the top three, but yeah, yeah the second and third, I I do also agree, could flip around. So, well, one thing I would say is, it's really weak to hypnosis, so just don't play it, guys. No, um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, <laughs> this uh, the idea I think of this deck is there's a, a really strong Pokemon called Zoroark and another really strong Pokemon called Garbodor, and if you just put them both together, you get a really strong deck. You get a Chimera. <laughs> yeah, I think I think basically <laughs> it's a got really so many nice, um many Chimera. <laughs> it it's got so much strength to it because. You, you know, you'd think, well, why are you going to put Toxin in a deck with um, with Trade? 
and we've always seen these garb decks in the past which have always been like first you know dark cry garb where there was why would we put toxin in a in a deck where we want to use the ability and well time and time again it's come up where we really want to do that one of the reasons is with the uh, trade especially is you trade more and can draw into setting up that toxin garb very quickly it also means that actually they sort of have to pick kind of thing because if they want to kill your garb it's like cool i'll have my abilities back as well so it, it's really quite tricky for them for mm. a lot of decks to deal soundly with the combination of Zoroark and Garbodor. What's really interesting about it is it used to be um, it used to be paid with Bursting Balloon and you, you use your trades, use your ability and then you burst and balloon the Garbodor and then your opponent's the only one that's locked out of using the abilities for that turn unless obviously they have a field blower. But then it changed to um, it just it, it just it just got taken out. I'm I'm not sure the reason why. Just because it's hard to set up every turn a bursting balloon. Yeah, a, and it's just not as needed. I think floatstone is also just good. Mm, yeah. There are other things you want to get back with your puzzle of times. And yeah. I guess you're playing uh, uh, two or three field blower. Three. three. I think so. Yeah, you can get rid of them. And easy enough i think um i'd sum up sum it up like in a format like this your tools really you want them to be proactive as best as you can not not always obviously but the more passive a tool the worse it is obviously yeah. any tool activates garb so you can be stuck putting a choice band on it that's fine but the um the field blowers just they do a lot more unless your tool has done something for you as well so being able to, you know, playing more float stones in your deck means, you know, you can put the garb active to retreat it, for example, or you can float stone your active to retreat it. You actually get something proactive out of it, mm -hmm. as opposed to bursting balloon in which you don't, or they, if they hit into it, then you do, sure, but otherwise... I don't think no. anyone would hit into a garb if it has bursting balloon. Um, if you need to KO it. Mm. Yeah, because mm. that's the... Okay. One thing I would say about the Bursting Balloon build um, is the 60 damage obviously does combo quite nicely with Zoroark in doing 150. But I still think the the Stefan Floatstone choice band version is better. Yeah. I yeah. think Garbodor's just always been such a broken card. <laughs> like, yeah. ev every deck at the moment, while well, most are just playing a ton of items which they can't help, uh, you destroy Rayquaza, which is yeah. always nice to have a nice easy win there. Oh yeah, I hadn't even mentioned the trash launch. <laughs> has, has good typing, and then at the end of the day, how many games do you just win by playing N while you have a garbage toxin down with yeah. a one prize attacker? Like it's just happens so often. Down, out of abilities, and then yeah, just N. Um, yeah, that that it's... combo has just been broken since it first existed, really. It's, it's also got like the parallel. 13. So, yeah, Sorry. yeah. Garb plus N was was around then, but it it being Garb N and parallels always that bit sort of ruder, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> have one card, have no ability, Rude. and have Rude. three bench. Yeah. Yeah. It just hinders so many deck setups at the moment. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I mean, Zoroark. yeah. So the trade into <laughs> the Garbatoxin is actually. You know, and of course, if it ever, you can also fill blow your own Garbodor, which is again a yeah. great thing, and you get an immediate, um, you know, effect off of that, which is in the trades. Just, uh, just really good deck. Yeah, yeah. I'd say if you're going to Worlds, consider this as one of your top picks, personally. I, I think at least consider the fact you're probably going to be facing this quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I think a card that we haven't really spoken about it in the deck that makes it super powerful as well is Latios. Yeah. Hmm. Latios um, is a really underrated card. Um, I, some people might say, oh, it's a tech card, but no, I think it's a, a must in the deck. Um, and it sets up nice numbers. And... It, it can, yeah, it can one shot a buzzle with a yeah. choice band. It can set up no, multiple players. Well, we, uh, choice bands. Oh, with the... Yeah, Lagoon Flight. Oh, yeah, is a really it can do good Lagoon attack. Flight. Yeah. 
this is one of the few decks that plays this Latios that yeah. actually maybe even aims sometimes to do Lagoon Fly. Oh, not you, just you definitely aim to do it. Yeah. You, you want to be doing it that your first couple of turns because obviously people will withhold using their items. And if they're withholding their items, like Buzz decks, for example, that means they're not playing their elixirs, they're not playing their ultra balls to get uh, their memories out and stuff. So slowing them down. Exactly. Yeah, I mean... So Latios just stops the whole slowing down. It's like, hey, you, if you're going to win, you're going to have to play some items down, mate. <laughs> yeah, basically, you put them in a place where they sort of have to play four items. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, with Latios, you have like, the. If you have a Latios active with an energy, it's hard for Buzz to go after Zeros on the bench because yeah. they have to deal with the threat of the Latios. Yeah, so it's not yeah. just there as in, like, it's, it's great for being attacking, it's there for the attacking reasons, but it's also there as a threat. It's like, you can't yeah. just, yeah, like Ben said, you can't ignore. You can't ignore anything. Latios. You have to take it out, you have to, you can't put 30 damage onto a Zerua. You have to put a 30 damage on the bench Latios to have a chance of KOing it the turn mm. after. Mm. You shouldn't guzma around the Latios to KO a Zerua. One thing I will say for the world's format uh, is if you do plan to play this is obviously test it quite a lot because it being it being a guard deck, it, you can have a tendency to, you know, have to, well, not play slower yourself, but have longer games. And so, also there's the chance of also misplaying, like you forget to trade before you ability lock. That's just you. Yeah, that's I just don't you. play the deck. I don't play the deck. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, a couple of things is basically day one. Unless you get three ties, a tie is pretty much the same as a loss. So you want to be, you know, this is a deck that I feel can tie, and sometimes if you have say slightly bad starts, you can force a tie, which is is fine but not day one, so it's just something to consider. I still think it's obviously just a ridiculous deck, and so many, many, I believe, will just make it through day one. Mm. I, I think I think we'll definitely see a couple top eight, one or two. Mm -hmm. There's a question. Would you play the way Stefan played it with um, only special energy, or would you take out a, the Cartana and put in a second E-Hammer? I uh, think you can play a hybrid, e so you can still keep the Kartana and still keep special energy, but you play either one or two psychic energy. Yeah. Yeah, I think you need psychic energy or you lose two Because the, mm -hmm. the 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 reason for Kartana is partly it's well mainly its ability, but then there's also the GX attack which just lets you take a prize and that can really help against uh if you just need to take your last prize of the game you can attach New, yeah, your unit energy to Cortana so, and GX attack. Personally, I feel like if you're trying to ever do that, you want more than one energy accessible to do it with. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with that. I think in a deck with puzzles, you don't need to. If you're that, if you're going for that specific play, you're planning it so many turns in advance hmm. that you're able to. You're able to have one. Off with one. Yeah, I guess it just means you can't puzzle for other specific things. Yeah, mm -hmm. and even then, Zora can usually control what it discards. So you can even go around a game plan where you actually hold that unit energy until a lot later in the game. Mm, sometimes you you have really bad discards in your hand, and the only thing you probably could get away with trading could be that unit energy, though. Oh, of course, there is a, there is also a card named N. But anyway, yeah, these <laughs> these are specifics of matchups, which I I don't think was is the purpose of a. Uh, this but yeah but basically um the uh the specifics of what you pick to play in that deck i think is, would require a lot of testing mm -hmm. perhaps the one unit is actually enough even to to do that strategy but there is also the option of just playing pure psychic and say a couple of enhanced hammer i've seen a lot of people even considering rainbows and <laughs> trying to maybe pull off a trickster GX once in a while. <laughs> not not so sure, but um, in any way round, I think this deck's really good. Any more thoughts? Uh, it's a really strong deck. Mm. Yeah, no doubt. I agree. Right. There's no way anyone can argue that it's not a strong deck, considering its track record. Yeah. And if you've got a good list, which you know a lot of the lists probably will be based mm. off of Stefan's and um, 
his teammate, then yeah, we'll have a we'll see. We'll it will have a good showing at Worlds, I believe. Mm -hmm. So on to second place. Again, we're gonna have to kind of call this a variance, but there mm. there are a couple of versions of um, this, two but... very different versions. I think we well, didn't group Zoroark as variants because there are just so many decks that are their own deck. Yeah, as well, and there's just so many of them that they're putting it as variants. Just, but this one is definitely variants. Now, I'd say there are actually three of this variant, which I haven't yet named. Oh, yeah, you're but... right. Yeah. I'm sure you could uh, probably have figured it out by now that it's Buzzwell. So mm -hmm. second place, that's our boy, old Buzzy boy. He's the big back. Buzz, the mosquito. To, to be fair, we might even argue there are more than that, but then that's kind of down to counts of baby Buzz versus big daddy Buzz in um, your lists. Oh, right, yeah. I'd, I'd, say, I'd, I'd say the three. I'd say the three main ones: so Buzzrock, Buzzgarb, and Buzz Macargo. There's also yeah. um, Baby Buzzguard, which has been doing well quite recently. Oh, yes, and that one too. I think so, they're all under Buzzguard, I'd say, personally. I'd say Baby Buzzguard is different to Buzzguard. Okay. I'd well. say it's a different deck, but I think that should have been in the... Which is getting a little bit now, but we're not going to talk about it. Okay. We'll mention so, it. It's an honourable yeah. mention. Well, <laughs> I'd, I'd say they all fall under this uh, Buzz variant yes. you know, handle as such. So, I mean, first one I guess we'll talk about is actually Buzz Rock. Yeah, just because I don't think we need to say too much. <laughs> <Dominant>. <laughs> it's um, it's, few... it's Buzzrock. It's Buzzrock. It's, it's been dominating the format for the past what six months. I think it's won like one or two tournaments, maybe, in the past year. Mm. I don't maybe? know. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. But it's been getting tons of top fours, I'd say. Oh, I was joking, right. Rob. It's one time. It's yeah, one it's oh. it's <laughs> one a lot. <laughs> Well, that, that's the thing. It's it's I one of us at this point. <laughs> but Zoroark has actually, you know, won maybe just as much, if not more. And in fact, we've seen a few tournaments where Boswell isn't even in the top eight. But you can bet in that top thirty-two, there's like a hundred. <laughs> there's twenty. There's twenty-four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's all the other. Yeah, so it's not that they, you know, basically it's it's just a very very straight. Well, I don't say no again. Straightforward, not quite what I mean. It's just very solid. No, yeah. I'd say I'd say it's. I wouldn't say it. It, it, it is straightforward, but it's because Rob straightforward to the. Um, it, it you can separate the good players and the bad buzzword players. Basically, it's straightforward. Yeah. But even but, the buzz, even the bad ones can do well. Yeah. Because the deck can just, it can have some dodgy setups, but ge mm. generally, you know, you hit you hit those elixirs and you can just be taking games. It's super aggressive deck, deals damage really quickly, can even take not quite donks, but, you know, anything that's playing evolving Pokemon really has to consider <laughs> that it will be going against some buzz rolls, buzz rocks think... even. I think what uh, a really good thing about it is it's got an answer to every deck in the format, um, or more or less at the moment. Uh, people playing Hooper, you've got Baby Buzzwell. Um, you need to play against Gardevoir, you've got Buzz GX for one shotting and Lycan Rock GX for one shotting. Uh, Zoro weakness, you play tons of energy, you play Elixir, you play Beast Wing. Uh, hmm. You've got Dad, so you, you, you can carry. It's got an answer to everything, but it's like you said, its main weakness is because it's got so much in the deck, you need to make cuts, and that can cut consistency. Yeah, I, I've found that if you're dropping below <laughs> 2 2 Octillery, it's already not fun, even though decks have obviously, lists have obviously done well with 2 1 Octillery. Well, well I list with 1 1 1. A tournament a regional. Yeah, it did actually. With a <laughs> one but we haven't seen any zero ones yet. Um, yeah. But it could come around the corner by surprise. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> Just Sycamore so... and Octillery to bait your opponent. Oh, he must be playing Octillery. <laughs> Just like, no no space for Remoraid, friends. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah, but basically, it's, it's Buzz Rock. Yeah. I think Rob's yeah. points there, like, it, it kind of deals with the very small. And the very large, like, yeah. and everything in between. It's a terrifying deck. It's a very versatile deck. 
Yeah. Oh, I agree. Yeah. It's the it's deck even playing where, more. It's the deck where you play it and you're like, there's no sort of matchup where you're like, ah, oh, not this matchup, or oh. <laughs> you're sort of kind of comfortable against everything. Like even Malamar, which it's negative, I'd say you're still fine. Yeah, yeah, his worst matchup was probably Malamar, and yeah. where I is mean... that deck? <laughs> it, it's I, not I, the I, biggest I, 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 fan I, I, of. Sorry. I, going, I was just going to say it's not the biggest fan of Naganadel, but no. yeah, I, I've still mm. seen it win I and I yeah. wouldn't expect a huge amount anyway. So and, uh, and as we touched on before, Zoro Burnett can, can might be a bit difficult. Uh, but it's it's before it used to be like you said a very straightforward deck anyone could win. But I think because of now Zoro control, and uh, you have to play very smart with it now. Uh, you can't just place down your special energies whenever wherever you want. You can't even place down Diancy now whenever wherever you want. You have to be smart with the deck. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> um. Yeah, so because there's enhanced hammers, you might want to order your placement of energies while you can first, because you don't want these wasted energy attachments anymore. Uh, just placing it down, maybe, hey, I'm going to place down um, a strong energy, turn one, all good. No, you're going to get enhanced hammer, or maybe Team Fair granted it, and that's a wasted energy attachment. Yeah, so it obviously does have some manner of weaknesses. It it can even it can lose to say ng denial or ng removal but um you know it's it's inherently so aggressive that it, you can still just win games one thing i will say though is um i i it really does suffer the uh the garb end problem mm. quite a lot i think so, um and i think like you said we were saying about the cuts i think its biggest weakness is itself hmm uh, with uh, consistency, um, but yeah, yeah. Ever since Beastman came into, ever since Beastman came in format, it's like you had to make uh, two to four cuts to fit those beast wings in. But even then, it's like such a an aggressive deck that you can afford to lose one game in best of three, and you still will have mm -hmm. time for two more. Yeah, so, so especially in a day one format, yeah, where really important. Is is bad. Yeah, uh, it's really time. good. Yeah, it's honestly um. A kind of why Rayquaza is here as well is it just a day one so I don't think I mentioned it when we talked about Rayquaza but a day one worlds format where yeah you, you, you can just I mean you can finish every game every you, you, can, you can get to the last 10 cards by turn 3 easily yeah. in Rayquaza yeah it's a good deck <laughs> oh sorry I meant Boswell forget about that <laughs> um, but no Boswell for day one deck it's like now, a go to choice Easy. Interesting thing, obviously, is um, well, like I said, it it kind of suffers the garb end problem, but it can, of course, play its own garb. So that's where we come to Buzz Garb as a deck. Mm -hmm. Now, first, I guess we should talk about the GX version. Okay. Please. And my opinion of that is that we stop talking about it because <laughs> I mean, there was a particular place for that, and that was um, European Internationals until the next set was released, and then. It should have stopped there. <laughs> See, I think it, I think I think the Buzz Garb Autopad version was pretty cool. There, yeah. So I was going to say there are actually two versions really even within that. I've seen one with just the Garbotoxin and Elixir build, and then I and well, A Beast Ring obviously. Now. And and I've seen the other one, which actually I believe there was a, a version of one which played like four fighting, four strong, four rainbow or something oh, silly it and. Played uh, it played DCE as well, I think. DCE, what? yeah, and Trash yeah. Launch. Yeah. And oh, that was it. Played, it played no fighting. Yeah, Wait, it, was, played... it was Mark Lutz's build, right? It, hmm. Yeah, it played like uh, DCE, Rainbow, and Strong. No basic and Beast. Energy. Yeah. And That's Beast. Interesting. Yeah, so its its idea was to do the what it can do with one I mean, energy attachment. If you Tapu can top tech... was... Sorry. Sorry, oh. if you can top tech what you need with that deck every turn with that version then <laughs> other than if you can't then it's bad i guess well the other version as well so moving on from that is the uh the baby boswell gobbed or deck i've seen some even maybe probably the right call without tapu lele at all yeah. so this is a pure non-ex non-gx deck 
Oh, I would. I wouldn't play a deck which only plays special energy. Mm. Yeah. When mm. you're going into a format dominated by enhanced hammer. Enhanced hammer, <laughs> even the crushing hammer, just energy removal. I'd say. Yeah. Just. Meh. Yeah. And not only that, it's like we've got Zoro decks now playing. Uh, well, they've always played like Insurono and Max Potions, but they're going in hard with them. They're playing like now two Max Potions or one ones. I think they always did the one one split, but uh, when you're not spreading damage with uh, Buzzwell, it makes it a lot weaker. And well, you're getting weaker. less out of each individual attachment because yeah. it's being healed off. And I believe a lot of decks are also, um, obviously the whole plan is to get down to four prizes and you can take a big knockout, but a lot of Zorak decks are playing, um, uh, what's the stadium called? Um, Brooklyn. Zorak decks, uh, to make... Oh, Zorak, sorry. Uh, yeah. Power also to do an extra 10 damage. Um, Wait, what? Oh, Devoured Field. Oh, Devoured Field or Devoured Reverse Field Valley. Or Reverse Valley, yeah. Yeah. So we can one-shot buzzers if they wanted to. Yeah, so Zorox have plays versus it. It's, um, interestingly enough, it's like, it, it obviously hits Zorox for weakness, but still isn't, like, so amazing versus Zorox variants that it's an auto-win by any means. Sometimes it's slightly positive. Uh, there's one final build, actually, of um, Buzzwell, and, uh, well... Uh, dare I say, maybe we let Rob talk about it, but I'm not so sure. I think we should let Rob talk about this. One. I think Ben and Rob, since they uh, they kind of were more on track with this this idea. Um, I don't know. It's not that great. I didn't put many hours into it. <laughs> Over forty, um, <laughs> probably even more. Actually, I probably put in like hundred um, in the last but... few weeks. In the last week, <laughs> 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 uh, Buzz Macargo. I think it's a very very strong deck. Um, it's 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 like it's like an overpowered artillery. You, you use a Rangaroo or which stuff, and you can get whatever card you want on your turn. Any card which says, "You see this card, Beast Ring." You can just have that in your hand. Yeah. And, what, and what's that? You've got a Sycamore too for another Beast Ring. Oh, oh, you want a Guzma? Oh, okay. Here you go, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> If friend it just keeps giving, that's what it is. The card beast, is like beast energy, yeah, sure, energy. man. I got you, <laughs> I'll hook you up. I think it's probably it might be the best version of all three. Um, it has obviously no got its weaknesses, too. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't like garb. <laughs> no, it doesn't then, like garb at all. Um, or what does <laughs> oh, Bayonet, no, but um, also, um. Because you're playing these, yeah, you're relying on abilities now. It's like that extra weakness to garb, and you don't have that non psychic weakness attacker like Buzzrock does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it kind of replaces the Lycan Rocks um, in a way for uh, the hardcore aggression. The, well, the Mag Cargo, and then kind of replaces the Octillery with an Orangaroo in a way, and then goes a bit heavier on. Uh, the energy counts maybe to fit in uh, scorched earth and or to make use of scorched earth even yeah it's, it's an interesting deck i quite like it i think um i like it as well anything I've... as ben said that says put beast ring in your hand <laughs> in a <laughs> combo is uh, it's good it's, it's good yeah. yeah which isn't a supporter for turn obviously yeah I think Eat. like the deck core is, is really strong. It's really like any deck which can do like ninety damage turn one and then thirty to the bench mm. is pretty good in this format because yeah. a lot of decks just can't keep up. Even if you get like a turn one KO on a Trubbish or a Zura, they just can't yeah. really do much. Especially you, you can just always respond because you stack your deck essentially. Yeah. And legally. Yes. <laughs> yes. Not, legally, not... of course. You get to do... <laughs> you get to use that old smooth over, and um, is powerful. yeah, it's it's just so nice with the scorched earth as well. Scorched earth or angaroo, uh, just yeah, even just yeah, stacking you... for a sycamore that you're about to use. Yeah, so Adam thinks just stacking's fine, but we prefer. Uh, of course, Adam loves stacking. 
We had team sneak attack. Do not condone stacking. Only with the Macargo. Or Mallow. <laughs> only smooth over. Yeah, nice. only smooth or over. And, okay. and stack attacker. Because it's in the name. Right, so <laughs> we're going to move on from, from that. Now, yeah, Boswell, obviously, ridiculously strong pick for Worlds. Um, you should definitely test against it <laughs> if you're not playing it, because it's one of those things where, let's say I was out of the game, I was shown these cards, I'd be like, oh, does, does anyone, like, not play this? <laughs> you know, but I'm not out of the game, so there's that. Now, um... You're just out of Worlds. <laughs> oh, Okay, bye. Right, so um, <laughs> any any more words on on those? We we kind of lumped all variants into the um, into the one place. I think Buzz Rock is probably the one we're going to see the most. Yeah. Hmm. It's do like you a... want to do you want to vote on what we think the best one is between us? Uh, we can do. We've got five people here, so it's never gonna be a vote. Well, I mean, someone votes get... Buzz Garb. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one's, no one's. Can we just have Buzzgar but like number a hundred on this list? No, Sorry, Will. I'm, <laughs> I'm afraid it's a good deck. Well, I, I, vote for, I vote for Buzz Cargo. Okay, I think I'm gonna go for Buzz Rock. Um, oh, Radio silence, boys. I, uh, I'm gonna say Buzz Cargo. Okay. So we've got two traitors in our midst. I think because <laughs> of what I expect the world's format to be, I'm going to have to say Buzz Rock. Oh, oh. oh no. Poor Will. Buzz Cargo. And... Hey! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, um, I've been testing it as well, and I picked it up really fast. It's it's such a nice deck to have. It's, just, it's such a nice deck. I didn't. I lost two games in a row. <laughs> but saying that, though, I do agree with Adam. I think one of its biggest weaknesses is Zoro Garb, which Buzz Rock doesn't have as much of a weakness to. Yeah. Um, if there was, if Zoro, if Garb wasn't in, okay, you can say this. Right, if, but if, Garb if, Garb so, if there wasn't as much Zoro Garb, it, I would say Buzz Cargo. Yeah, Garbotoxin wasn't a thing. Yeah, unfortunately, it is. So um yeah so I guess Buzz Cargo actually wins that so yeah bye. Uh, I, I think oh yeah I, I'm changing my vote sorry guys it's uh, oh wait it doesn't matter I think <laughs> I, an important thing to note with the deck is um with Buzz Cargo if you're looking for a deck the week before Worlds and you you're not really sure and you haven't really practiced I think it's quite a good deck to not have a lot of practice with. Mm. Yeah, but you will struggle against um, some things, I think. Garbotoxic. And you'll, I think... Be, and you'll be spending a bit longer on your decision-making. I think one thing is as well, it's just very fast. So, yeah, if you're not sure and you're not super tested, uh, being able to smooth over for any card, you can analyse that each turn. Yeah. So you don't have to, uh, <laughs> you know, think even too far ahead. Go, oh, beast string here. That's a good idea. Yeah, like what card do I really need right now? Yeah. So, okay, so finally now, we're on to our number one pick, which uh, I believe is probably unanimous, and that's yeah, uh, a Zoro think... Control uh, deck. Oh, is it, is it not Miss Majors? <laughs> <laughs> I've got Miss Majors and, here on my uh, papers. Um, sorry? Uh, uh, now, I've got the list in front of, mix of me. Up. I, have, I have a Lowland Dog Trio. Um, I'm I'm pressing Control and F like a madman for this Miss Magius. <laughs> right, uh, yeah, Zoro Control, the best so, format by far. Yeah. I think if this doesn't win Worlds, I'll eat. I'll buy a hat and then I'll eat it. Uh, right, viewers, you've got it. On, okay. you've got it recorded. <laughs> why is why is I'll eat my hat a phrase? Because right, let's talk about Zoro. Sorry, that comes from animals, so technically you can eat it. Oh, Otherwise... I don't ah. believe you. Anyway, and this is why Will is a teacher. I'm not a teacher. <laughs> Moving on to the Pokemon content. <laughs> <laughs> what was that conversation? Right, <laughs> Zoro, Zoro Lock or Zoro Control. Different, different ways of saying it. Different ways of playing it. Um, good deck. 
and that's our video no so uh who wants to uh who wants to speak a bit about it um i would like to speak a bit about it, if that's all right since i i think i may have done the most no. testing with the deck in our group mm. well, not allowed today, sorry adam you've no. done the same amount because you tested it pretty much as always against me <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> now let's let adam say his piece yes so uh, i forrowed adam the other day just so yes you did um okay, so i've got to say the deck is incredibly powerful it's it's not always intuitive because it's not always about oh i need to go ahead i need to take prizes it's got a lot of different options it can take in a game as well as just having so many possible techs i think the the most common variant of it at the moment is probably the macargo version which it just allows you to grab any card you want every turn and for a control deck that's like amazing oh i need a crushing hammer this time i can grab that i need enhance hammer this time i can grab that oh i need to end them i can do that just that power just makes it so insane that if you're not against another Zorot deck that's locking out your field or stopping Macargo from working you've just got that inherent consistency which I don't think anything else can reach off at the moment it's one of those things as well even against Garb let's say you do find your blower because you have Mag Cargo and Zorok, you have access to anything hmm. I, I think another thing which is incredibly scary about it fact, no, against Buzzwell decks especially uh, chaining new EXs you can just uh, get one out the next turn a lot easier now. After one gets KO'd, if you needed to KO another bunch of GX. Yeah, so of course you only play one, but you generally can get quite easy you, access. You can get your rescue your... stretcher and get it back. Yeah. Have access to uh, DCs and uh, choice bands to uh, naturally join into them or, um, or puzzle timing for them. Yeah. It's uh it's also got a lot of nice um yeah, you know, nice little sort of Aranguru plays just put back three puzzles kind of thing. I think mm -hmm. Aranguru's well, definitely a staple. Um but oh, it's the integral part of the deck. Yeah, it's gonna see a lot of play this world's format. I think. You can even get away with attaching two double colourless to it to use its attack now and then. No, yeah. I think it's just the fact it has a playable second attack which is has confusion is just such a nice thing to have as well like even if the yeah. card didn't do anything other than just put three cards back in your deck it would still be amazing but the fact it has a usable second attack that you can use against hooper or even just against a threat just to confuse them for a turn it's just so nice to have that option yeah 60 damage at the same time hmm. and now a lot of builds play cards like say uh delinquent and team rockets handiwork so um you've got options to say deck someone out I think that's the main point of the deck, is to deck yeah. someone out. Yeah. I, I, or I run think, them I think, so I far think, out of resources. I Sorry, think God. attacking has actually become a uh, secondary win mm. option. Yeah. option to win. I think its primary win is to uh, make your opponent one out of resources and then deck them mm -hmm. out or then attack. Yeah, yeah. So basically, I think you... <laughs> it's. I mean, it's a controlled deck. It's what they've always done. You get your opponent to a point where they're not going to take the last prize. Hmm. I think one of the things and... that has come up I've seen is uh, I mean other people have mentioned it as well is that it can it can create this thing called a perfect lock, which is that you always have six cards in your deck, three of them being Pokemon, three of them being a puzzle, and that just allows you to access any three cards you want every single turn. And it just that it can be two crushing hammers, it can be crushing hammer team rockets handiwork. It just becomes such a powerful disruption. And just imagine Team Rocket's handy at every turn, which should average out at one heads a turn. That's two cards off the top of your opponent's deck every single turn of the game, while also yeah. potentially removing energy or anything else. Yeah. Yeah. The, the deck's pretty good, man. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty, <laughs> pretty good. It's like hands down the best deck. It can do all it can beat like it it caps out <laughs> 120 damage. Most don't play choice ban, buffs, nothing like that. Doesn't even play text for Ray, but it can win on energy removal and hmm. that alone. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> it's got multiple ways to win. No, no other deck has that option. Except yeah. for Ray Quaza where it can deck itself out. <laughs> <laughs> you also have um quite a few nice little uh, little things like say weakness policy. That means Buzzwell, especially if they don't play field blower, just can't really deal with or hmm really struggles to take KOs and it can heal itself with say max potions or acerola it's just I think, it's, yeah go 
I think you should expect at least one or two field blower in buzz walls from now on because I think, of weakness policy. I think they have to more or less play at least one, probably two, yeah. solely because of this deck. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, go. I thought Adam was going to say something. Oh, no, I was uh, just going to say that if they don't play weakness policy, you can just chuck that on an Oranguru. It'll just never die, and if they're not killing the Oranguru and killing the Zoroks, they, how do they win? Do you mean if they mean don't play Field, field Blower? Blower? Yes, that's what I meant, sorry. If they don't, if okay. that, so that weakness policy can stick on that Oranguru, they just don't really have a way to deal with your your lock, and yeah. if they can't deal with the lock, they're going to lose. And even so, if they do play Field Blower, it's just like... You can just uh, get your weakness policies back when you can't get the uh, field blowers back. Hmm. Yeah, if they're doing that and only taking the one prize off a Rangaroo and they're not doing taking that one prize every turn, you'll you'll win them. You'll win yeah. that on deck out basically. So even against <laughs> Buzzrock, it's got it's got ridiculous strength. It's yeah. I think I'm gonna buy a hat just in case I have to eat it. I, I, I'd buy an edible hat. So, yeah, I believe Ben was going to make a point. Hat. I was going to say, I think the biggest weakness of the deck is that there's just too much you can do with it. Like, there's too many cards that can fit in, mm -hmm. and you have to sort of figure out for yourself... The best combo. Like, the best cards to put in, like, what matchups you want to improve the most, where you want yeah. to sort of go, mm, okay, I have to make this a bit weaker. And also just the amount of testing you have to put in with it, because every turn you have so many options to get to, like, the end game loop. It's, it's just hard to sort of get used to. And you also just have to know how to play the loop and also the mirror. Yeah. So, so Ooh, like, if you, thought, if you thought Ninja Mirrors was bad... Oh, uh, boy. Yeah. Can we have a petition that <laughs> we ban Zoro Lock Mirrors on stream at the World Oh, World my, World please. I, 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 th I, th I think from what Ben said, though, it's just, yeah, you need to know how to play the mirror. And if you're playing against Zoro um, variants... You, you're most likely only going to be playing one game, and yeah. you need to know when you're going to lose. You know, you need to know when you've lost the game if you are in a losing position, because there will not be time, most likely, to play a second game. So, so really, you have to try and take that out to a tie. Yeah, which is an issue for day one because you cannot have too many. Ties. Oh, I still was trying. Well, you can have too many ties if you have three ties. Otherwise, you don't want any. <laughs> yes. But four is too many. Well, one is it's too many. It's also too squared. <laughs> Two is too many. Three is okay again, but not really. It was a match joke. I think it was lucky joke. And um, yeah, so really, you just want to be winning games. Which yeah. um, yeah, sorry, good joke, Rob. I can't ignore it for that long. I'm a fan. Yeah. I'm a fan of those. <laughs> um. Yeah, Zoro it's... Lock shouldn't see much play day one. No, I, I think it's an odd day one pick. I yeah. think it's not a great day one pick. Not because it's a bad deck or bad for day one. I think it's just because it will be quite hard to guarantee not tying. Yeah. But... Especially if everyone's playing Zoro decks. Um I yeah. think I think it's it, it, yeah. It's it's not, it's obviously not bad to use day one because it's not as much of a difference than using the day two. But well, day two you can tie twice. Well, we were saying you can tie three times day one. Yeah, but then you have to win every other round. Mm. Oh. I was gonna say that I think another weakness of the deck is just how mentally exhausting it will be. Yes, because mm. you're playing. You're playing, it, you're playing for. So you're playing day two. You play nine rounds. Even if you get to top cut, you have to play usually top eight and top four on that day. You can be yeah. playing until midnight, a deck which requires so much sort of brain process. <laughs> which you won't the finish deck deck unless, oh, you'll be going to time every round. Yeah, and that's just assuming, you know, if you do one slip up, it can lose you a game, yeah. and that's the end of your worlds. So I feel uh, a lot of people will be worried about playing a deck like that. Yeah. I mean, it's if a you deck that. Thrive on that kind of pressure. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. There, there was a deck in 2006 called New Lock. And it worked in a similar premise where you mm. just sort of lock your opponent completely out of the game, mm. out of resources. They that basically deck was, that deck was maybe one of the best decks in format then, but it didn't perform too well, mainly because of time restraints and also yeah. just the fact it's so exhausting to play. So <laughs> many games of it. It's also yeah, just one slip up can lose you it. So you have to be quite careful. 
it's um it's a, a high skill cap deck i think i think it's, it's the high it's the not only the best deck in format it's the highest skill deck i i think in recent times since uh seismitoad Seismitoad? Oh, that's has no seismitoad. skill at all. <laughs> seismitoad? <laughs> Wait, well, no, I was thinking, oh, you um, can't play items, I can do this. If you were going to say a Voltal Garb, then I'd agree with you, potentially. Dude, every single turn, every single tournament with Seismitoad, uh, I didn't have to think, I just had to say Quaking Punch. And then I, I think I've got that mixed up with the locking aspect, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Highest skill, high skill cap deck. Let's go cap decks and speed Lugia. Oh, really what a hard deck. Well, oh, that was a hard deck. <laughs> no, it was not. What about that uh, like Parisian Genesect, yes. guys? Heard that was quite tricky. Oh. Um, pardon? You attach, and then you attach again, and call the attack, and then you attach, and then call and attack. Oh, too hard. Can't do it. <laughs> yeah, so Zorok, you, your choices are one of the, are the hardest thing really oh the, the, what you choose to trade the the most important thing oh yeah trading is probably the the, the hardest thing in zork as you said because... one thing i will say is as well depending on the, the buzzwalls field blow account so one other reason it might not be as good day one is because i'd expect a slight increase of buzzwall compared to day two because of its you know inability should i say to tie so um and if the Buzzwells are playing multiple field blower, draw them at the right time, you know, just get a bit of a high roll, you can just lose a game one. And so then, even if you win a game two, you've tied. Hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, but then you've made a Buzzwell tie, which means they might not make it in, so hmm. good on you. <laughs> but, yeah, um, it's uh, yeah, just ridiculous deck. Should we all do a prediction on what we think will win Worlds? Yeah. Well, I think Jake's already locked into his with his hat. Well, I, I have to I buy a hat. He there, Adam. He's locked into it. Hey. <laughs> That's right, because it's a joke about Boswell. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, think so... it's a joke. I think it's a joke about Klefki, to be honest. Oh, dear. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to say Zoro Control, I think, wins. Wins Worlds. I agree. I think it's all control. I'm, I'm going to have to say the same, mainly because I want to play the deck, and I would like to play the deck that wins Worlds. <laughs> yeah. Well, ben, Will? I want to say either Buzz no, 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 no. or Buzz Cargo. <laughs> okay. Okay, Buzz Variant then. Buzz, yeah. You think Buzz Variant will win? Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, this is a tough one. My, my opinion matters so much here. I say that because I want Rob to win. Yeah. Lap press. I think I think Golduck is that. the chance. Golduck boys, that's the deck. But I, I might have to go as Zoro Control. So yeah, basically we're all agreed except for you know Will. Hello. That Zoro Hello. Control probably probably going to be taking this world. So obviously, you know. I won't be too shocked if a Buzzwell variant does, or um, even Zoro Garb, but I will be quite shocked if it's Avalug. <laughs> Explain Avalug. No. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and also I, I definitely agree with Ben's analysis that a Greninja could uh, could sneak its way in, maybe, mm. or find itself in ninth and 10th, yeah, or <laughs> something like it's that. It's always a possibility. Very highly. You, you know what's going to happen to Greninja? Like you say, I was thinking ninth and 10th. But there'll be that one auto loss matchup that Greninja has, and then it will face it. It won't. It that's the. It, it's typical of Greninja to do so. Well, it also does just struggle with Boswell anyway, and yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. That's our top ten decks for Worlds. If you have any um, any decks you think might be the play, comment down below. Of course, uh, like and subscribe as well. That's. Um, well, all of us, but at least five of us here from Team Sneak Attack. Uh, we'd like to also just thank Sammy Sakum of Sneak Attack Games. It's an excellent shop in London to uh, uh, for sponsoring us. And yeah, that's uh, that's all I have to say. So um, thanks for watching and uh, hope to see you again soon. Hello guys, it's Will from Team Sneak Attack here. Thank you for watching this video. Please remember to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you know when we upload our next video. Remember to leave a comment in the comment section down below and I hope to see you in the next video.
Bye.